darkness a new era. There's actually a live bomb. Do you want to hear something completely crazy? I just felt a bomb in my Tesla. Real bomb with live explosives and a timer that was counting down. That's actually not the crazy part. The crazy part is Tesla put it there. And if you drive a Tesla, there's a very good chance there's one in your car too. And your timer is ticking down every day, every hour, every second, until... That was a little intense, but don't worry because in this video, I'm going to show you why this bomb is in your car, where it is, and why it's ticking down. And you're not going to want to miss a second of this because I'll also reveal which cars are affected by this, what you need to do about this ticking time bomb, I'm thinking we should cut the blue wire, and just how long you have before you need to get off your butt and do something about this. To find out why this bomb is in your car, close your eyes and picture this. Wait. Don't actually close your eyes because then you can't really watch the video, can you? I didn't really think that one through. Okay, with your eyes wide open, picture this. You are driving down the road on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. It's sunny outside, you have the windows down and you feel a cool breeze in your hair. Not a care in the world. Until suddenly, BAM! You've been in an accident. As the shock slowly lifts, you start piecing together what happened. Maybe your car has flipped over and you're hanging upside down in your seatbelt. Or maybe you're sitting up straight but have blown airbags all around you. Except at this point you're entering the second stage of your accident. A stage that often can be more deadly than the initial accident itself. Because when an electric vehicle is in an accident, the battery system can get damaged, which means the intense power from your high voltage battery system can leak into your car's body and turn every metal surface into a deadly shock hazard. And before all you EV haters go crazy down in the comments, gas cars have a similar issue where explosive gasoline can leak everywhere and that can end very bad too. But this scenario is exactly why your car has a bomb in it. To keep you safe, car makers created what's known as a pyrofuse. The pyrofuse's job is to cut the power from your car's main battery the second it detects an accident happening. This then keeps you safe from blowing up or getting zapped by a deadly jolt of electricity, which sounds like a win to me. This is a pyrofuse, and this one just came out of my Tesla here. All Teslas have these, as do most cars these days. But unlike a regular fuse, a pyrofuse is an explosive device. There is actually a real live bomb inside of this little part. The bomb is there because the fuse needs to be able to react fast. Really fast. Because even though regular fuses may seem to blow fast, they actually have to wait for a little piece of metal to melt, which takes time. And when we're dealing with electrocution and gasoline explosions, every millisecond matters. Which is why the explosive pyrofuse was born. Because it's fast. I think we covered that by now. If you were ever in a severe accident, the sensors that trigger the airbags in your car also send a signal to the bomb inside the pyrofuse, which then literally blows up. Poof. It's actually more like this. Blowing the pyrofuse cuts all the power from the high voltage battery to the rest of the car, making the car safe to touch for you and for first responders. And in gasoline cars, cutting the power prevents sparks, which as we talked about, could cause the entire car to blow up. But since this is a video about Teslas, I'm gonna stop talking about gasoline cars now. So the bomb in your Tesla is actually a good thing. But what about that countdown timer I mentioned? Why on earth would the bomb need a timer? Well, this is all because Tesla's pyrofuse needs to process electronic signals in order to be triggered. And to do that, it needs electricity. So Tesla's engineers got together and thought, hmm, how can we get electricity to this part in our electric car? And they came up with the second most obvious solution, putting a tiny battery in the fuse. Because it's not like they could find another battery to draw power from somewhere. But there's one small problem with this design. Like all batteries, the battery in these pyrofuses eventually runs out. And when that happens, the fuse stops working. And if you get into an accident at that point, the little bomb will no longer go poof, which means you can get electrocuted again. Ouch. But Tesla is a smart company, so they came up with a solution. They figured out how long the batteries in these pyrofuses last, and they attached a clock to the battery that counts down to when they think the battery might run out of power or rather to a certain point in time before that happens because 
you know, we don't want the whole dead bomb scenario. So now when the clock hits zero in your car, this happens. Crap, there's an error about the battery. That can't be good. But it actually is a good thing because all this error tells you is that it's time to have your pyrofuse changed. It also means that your pyrofuse is still working and that you have about mm, six months or so left before things turn more serious. But if you wait too long and don't change the fuse, after another five months or so, the message will change to a slightly nastier version, letting you know that you need to get a new pyrofuse like now. I do not recommend waiting that long. So how do you get a new one of these? Well, it really couldn't be much simpler. All you need to do is schedule a service appointment with Tesla and bring your car to them. That's it. In most cases, they'll have you in and out in under an hour and you'll be on your way again in no time. If you have a local independent EV shop around, they can fix it for you too. And if you're wondering how much this costs, the answer is, it depends. If your high voltage battery is under warranty still, Tesla will replace your pyrofuse that has a low charge with one that has a full charge for no charge. <laughs> did you see what I did there? Well, basically it's free. At least it is here in the US. If this is different where you live, please let us all know in the comments down below. I'm very curious to hear if this varies by country. And if the warranty on your high voltage battery has expired, as was the case on my car here, the cost is usually around $300 but it can go all the way up to around $600 for certain older cars. Now, let's talk about where this bomb is located in your car because that also determines how much you'll be paying. If you look behind the front passenger side wheel, all the way in here, check to see if you have an access port like the one I'm showing you now. If you do, your pyrofuse is located right there which means it will cost around $300 to replace it. And if you don't see it there, that means your pyrofuse is located in a spot that's quite a bit more difficult to get to, and that's when you have to open up your wallet a little bit more. At this point, you might be wondering, when is this issue gonna hit my car? Well, unfortunately, there's no exact rule for this, but here's what I can tell you, and bear with me because it's going to be a little bit long, but we'll get there in the end. The battery-powered pyrofuses were used in Model S and Model X cars from 2015 to 2021. Sometime in 2021, they were replaced with an updated design which draws power directly from the car and hence will never run out of juice. Yeah, imagine that. Powering the fuse from electricity that's already in your electric car. That's genius. But there are exceptions to the 2015 to 2021 rule. Just because your car is from after 2015, that doesn't necessarily mean that's in the clear. My car is from 2013 and I still had to get a new pyrofuse. So... What does that mean? Did I just lie to you a minute ago? Am I full of crap? Don't answer that. Here's what's going on. Behind your right front wheel, there's a sticker on the battery. It has a code on it that tells you when the battery was made. Here's my sticker. See how the bottom number says T17F? That means that my battery was made in the A, B, C, D, E, F, sixth month of 2017. But my car is a 2013, so that doesn't really make sense. What it means is that my car got a brand new battery in 2017. So even if you have an older Tesla, you might still have a new battery. So check your battery sticker. If your battery was made between 2015 and 2021, you will likely have a pyrofuse that will need replacing eventually. So now that we cleared that up, let's get back to the timing of the pyrofuse failure. In my car, the pyrofuse message showed up exactly six and a half years after the battery was made. And there's some consensus online about six and a half years being when the error pops up. Except I've also seen cars where it didn't show up until eight and a half years after the battery was made. So there is no clear rule as to when this happens, which is frustrating. However, I'm thinking this is where we can use the power of YouTube. In order to get a better idea of when these power fuses might go bad, let's collect some data together. Put a comment down below with the year of your car, what year your battery is from, and after how many years and months you got the pyrofuse error. I'm putting my car in the first comment, and then we can all come back and get a better idea of how long it takes before these pyrofuses go bad. How amazing would that be? And finally, if you drive a Model 3 or Model Y, those cars never had a battery-powered pyrofuse, so there was no bomb in your car. You don't have to worry. And now that you got a handle on this whole pyrofuse thing, you may be wondering, what other things break on an older Tesla? So watch this video next to learn about another extremely common problem. Thank you for watching. Have a great day, and remember, kindness makes the world better.